good evening and welcome to the Journey Home program. I'm your host tonight, John Mark Grodi, and we're back with another story, another story of how the Lord has worked in our lives to bring us deeper into Christ, into His church, this great church that He's given us. Um, we're blessed today to be joined by Dr. Ray, Jason Reed. He's a former Evangelical Seminary professor. Jason, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. And we were talking beforehand, you know, as always, when we when we have a, a someone on to tell their story, the, the places, the names, there's so many connections. You know, we were talking there's about Doug, Doug Beaumont, um, Keith Nestor, uh, uh, Brian Dr. Cross, Dr. Dom uh, Dr. from Steubenville, who's my, who mm -hmm. my was uh, my graduate director of my mm -hmm. thesis. So so many connections. That's one of the cool things about these stories. As soon as we begin to see our life as a story that God is the author of, we see all the connections, all the all the ripples, all the waves, and so right. it's exciting. So I'll, I'll start you off, I'll, I'll let you go. Where does this story begin? Well, thank you, it's, it's great to be here. I've been watching the show for a long time, so this is, this is a real treat for me. Oh. So I was raised in eastern Iowa, small town, and I remember about the journey as when we were always going to church as a kid. My mother and my mm -hmm. father were very, um, it was very important to them that we went to the home church, the hometown church. Yeah. So I can remember getting up in the morning, getting dressed, I can remember, I can smell even today, the, the Methodist basement, oh, that Mustang, I can smell that, um, the pot roast that mom would have coming home. So I grew up in church, was very important to us. So that, you know, very normal um, upbringing. And then when I was about sophomore, junior year, then things really changed. Yeah. My, I'm not sure what happened, but there was some falling out at the church. And the domination that we were in was going in the wrong direction. Hmm. So my parents were rethinking everything. So from about the time I was 16, I didn't go to church anymore. But but that year was important because I was in a youth group mm -hmm. and I liked going to the youth group. And we had a, a, a Sunday school teacher that was asked us, do you want a personal relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Never heard that before. I'm yeah. like, okay, so sure, how do you do that? She said, we well, say what's called a sinner's prayer. And I've, I've said this probably a million times. Yeah. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I need you to forgive me for my sins and I want you in my life. So I remember doing that, and I thought, okay, I'm a Christian, right? Yeah. So that happens, and all of a sudden, we're not going to church anymore. Yeah, that was at the Methodist. That was at the okay. Methodist yeah. church, yeah. So um, went to college and didn't really like school. <laughs> so really lost. I mean, I, I look back now, and when I went to college, I did it because that just was the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was your experience of, you know, so what did Methodism look like oh, know, at question. the local level, and, and did that personal relationship take? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think it did at some level, but yeah. you know, when you're 15, 16, you do it, you know, sure. and um, I think it did, maybe more than I thought. Mm -hmm. But it was a typical Methodist church. Um, we followed the calendar. Um, it was had some sort of liturgy okay. there. Everyone sat in the back, <laughs> and the pastors always asked to come up forward. Um, so it was, I mean, it's kind of uneventful in sure. that sense. But, but in that context, still, it was not till your teen years that you had the suggestion that you encounter Christ personally. Exactly, huh. exactly. So that was, I think, in um, hindsight, that was in the back of my mind. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. So go to college, and the first two years are a blur, mm. really. Was interested in school, um, liked sports, um, did what I could, but I really didn't know what I wanted to study. So like I said before, it went to college because that's just what you did. Right. My best friend was going to the university. We got to fraternity house. We'll just do this. Yeah. So after two years of that, um, my mom came down with cancer. And that was a game changer, a big game changer. Because I saw something in my mother and my dad. I mean, um, my mom was at home. You know, she was losing her hair and she was reading her Bible. And I just was really thinking about just what's this all about? Right. So I had a crisis. Yeah. Like, what is this all about? So um, I had a book called Out of the Blue. It was written by Earl Hershiser that my dad's best friend, who was a former pastor, gave to me. It's, mm -hmm. his, it's his story. Read that, of course, I love baseball, so I'm reading this baseball player talk about his journey to faith. I didn't know baseball players had journeys to faith. And so I read that book, and so that's like, wow. So that kind of connected me, but not a yeah. whole lot changed personally. Still, you know, living a typical college life, partying on the weekends, things like that. Yeah. But then a good friend gave me a book called Comeback by Dave Dravecki. Hmm. So Dave Dravecki was a major league baseball player, and he had two bouts of cancer. The first time they cut out a major part of his arm. And the comeback was he actually came back from cancer and was came back major leagues and pitched. Wow. And but then the problem was, I don't know, maybe his first year after a few games, it broke again and cancer returned and his arm got amputated. Wow. So this would have been the summer, I think like nineteen ninety one. So this was between my sophomore and junior year. 
of college. So I went home and the Methodist church that was in, uh, in had a new pastor, mm -hmm. very evangelical, very interested in the personal relationship with God. We had lots of long conversations about mm -hmm. the faith. And he said, Dave Dravecki is speaking hmm. at, in Cedar Rapids at the Kennedy Auditorium. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. So I was all excited. Well, unfortunately, he couldn't make it, so he sent an audio tape. <laughs> so me and my best friend went, this is in June, I even had the ticket somewhere at home, mm -hmm. the, the um, attendance ticket. And sat in the back, June 28th, so it's coming up on, I won't say, how many anniversaries? <laughs> <laughs> A lot. A lot, yeah. More but than, not that many. Not, not that many, <laughs> that, not that many, that, not that many. Um, exactly. So during the testimony, what, what, the one thing I remembered, he's, mm -hmm. when he had his, and this is a major league pitcher, yeah. and his throwing arm is gone. And he said, looked in the camera, like, like look, I was the only person in the room. He said, oh, if God wants me this way, and if the key can reach people, that's the way it is. And I tell you, John Mark, it's like the Holy Spirit just hammered me. Yeah. It's called conviction yeah. to the viewers. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I sat there and my whole life was going through me. All the sins I committed, right? The direction I was headed. Mm -hmm. um, like, I'm in trouble. I'm really in trouble. I need to get right with God. So 1992, I go into my bedroom, in my little town, Springville, and I ask God to come in my life. I said, I, I, I need to change. Now, I didn't know all that, what that meant sure. but whatsoever, but I knew that I had been, I had changed. You know, so it's, that yeah. was really significant, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what that meant. I always think that's interesting, too. I mean, um, Christ in the Gospels says, repent and believe. You know, sometimes we, we, we take that step before we even understand what it's all about. I knew I needed to do this. But that, that, that moment when the Holy Spirit touches us, and we know we need to make some sort of change. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it gets funny, so I go back to college, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm in a fraternity, and I'm most of the, let's put it this way, the, most of them were not following God, put it yeah. that way. So we go out, and I'm hanging out. I just got, you know, I'm not drinking, not partying anymore. And my best friend in the world, uh, we've never had a crossword. His mm -hmm. name's Dave. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting out at the, uh, at the bar where our, our, another friend of ours was the bartender. Yeah. And he was just sharing with us just some mistakes he had been making and what he should do. And, and <laughs> so I'm on one side, our other friend's on the other side, right? Angel and demon. I don't know what I said to him. I started talking about Jesus to him, and he's just turning white. Now, Dave was raised in a very God-fearing family, so Dave knew what I was talking about. Yeah. Like, you gotta get right. With, you gotta get right with God. Mm -hmm. And and my other friend, who was a former Catholic, or he thought he was Catholic. Don't listen to that stuff. I'm I'm Catholic. You need to learn. That was my first introduction. Like what? So if you're Catholic, you're not doing that stuff. So that yeah. kind of started the whole, yeah, thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm talking to him, and he's thinking. Oh my gosh, I think Jason's right. So later we're back and Dave said, I'm, I'm gonna go home. He comes in my comes in my room and he's turning, he's looks like he's dead. He said, I need to get right with God. I'm gonna call my parents and I'm gonna go home and become a Christian. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we had our fraternity meeting that night, and so all the brothers are sitting there and they're wondering where Dave is. And I'm sitting in my chair. It's mm -hmm. one of those few moments I think where God where I'm, saying, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> I am not saying anything. And all before I knew I'm standing up, I say, Yeah, Dave went to become a Christian this weekend. We Dave became, Dave and I became Christians this summer. And you can hear a pin drum. I'm like, what just happened? Why did I say that? So Dave comes a Christian, so we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We don't know who to get involved with. Well, Dave's dad knew um, a campus crusade director yeah. at Iowa State. So that's our first introduction to a, a Christian group um, on campus. They had you know, music, and I, this is completely foreign to us. So we show up. We didn't know there were such things as campus Christian groups and their Bible studies. We were just blown away. This was yeah. pretty exciting. So we're starting getting formed by this. And so, um, but as I find out real quickly, not everyone on campus is excited about Christianity. Right. So I come against objections, um, Mormons, skeptics, atheists, agnostics, and I found out pretty quickly I needed to uh, get some answers. Yeah. So in the meantime, I have no, I have, I'm excited about Christianity, but I'm, I'm not excited about school. Mm -hmm. And I did not know this, that you could withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just quit going to school. Yeah. I quit going to class. I just read my Bible, and I just quit going to school. I'm not interested anymore. So Iowa State asked me not to come back for a semester. I didn't know that, so that's fine. I'll go home and start working. So I did that, um, came back, and in order to get back to school, um, <laughs> I had to go to a community college. This is where everything starts to change when it comes to my, my philosophy background. Sure. So um, I'm going to be a pastor, I, I assume, so I'm taking religious studies. 
Well, there was a philosophy class that fit my schedule that I did not want to take. <laughs> so I figured I'm going to show up. They're going to tell me, how do you know the chair is there? How do you know it exists? I'm going to be really irritated. Yeah. John Mark was nothing like that. Yeah. There's nothing like that. Dr. Heislop was his name. And actually, last six, couple summers ago, we reconnected. I thanked him for what he did nice. for me. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And interesting, the same thing happened to him. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sitting in class and I said, what's this joker going to tell me, right? He puts up on the board, what is the good life? I, st I stared at that. What is justice? The one that got me was, can you think you're happy and be wrong? Hmm. And I sat there, exactly. I did not know that philosophers asked the same questions I was as a, as a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the handmaiden of theology, right? I could it's, not believe it. There well. was actually was an academic thing. You could do this. I'm like, you can do this. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So fast forward a little bit. So I'm now a philosophy major mm -hmm. and doing, you know, enjoying it. And but what do you do with this thing? Well, you gotta you gotta keep going on with school. So in the meantime, I'm trying to figure out how does a Christian do this. So my roommate had a book called Introduction to Philosophy, a Christian Perspective by Dr. Norman Geisler. Mm -hmm. And so, and of course, this is back in the day, they had audio cassette tapes. So it was either in the book somewhere where you could, uh, you could buy audios of his debates and things. And mm -hmm. so I got his debates and his lectures. I remember sitting there listening to Dr. Geyser debate philosophers whose textbooks I had been reading. Yeah. And he was winning the debate. I, mean, I did not I mean this Christianity, you can debate it. Something called apologetics. Mm -hmm. Like what is philosophy? So philosopher, Christians are philosophers. Yeah. Could not believe it. Yeah. So on the back of the book, he was a professor of philosophy at, at a college or a seminary at the time. So you know what? I'm just going to call him. Mm -hmm. So then we had back then we had things called answering machines. <laughs> so I call his office. He's not in. Mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll, but I'll let you know that he called and took his number. So I go in my bike, go back, go off to school, um, go off to class, come back, and it's flashing one message. Push it. Jason, it's Norm Geisler. I opened the door. This is Norm. I could not believe it. <laughs> Yeah, it was unbelievable. Dr. Geyser's on my answering machine. I call my good friend Drew. Um, I, called, I call the office. He invites us down to his house. He doesn't even know me. So my buddy Drew and I fly down to a conference, meet him, his wife. We stay at his house. And he um, had a book on someone called St. Thomas Aquinas. Mm. St. Thomas Aquinas, um, an evangelical appraisal, should old Aquinas be for God? And I, I actually was reading the book yesterday. The, my, my version's falling apart. Mm -hmm. but I read that. Who is a St. Thomas Aquinas? So I'm reading him, and Dr. Geyser said, we study Thomism here at the, at the seminary. So I'm going to go to seminary. This is, I'm going to study under him, and I met some of the professors there. I mean, this is, this, this is life-changing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can do this. And so I went home and told my parents. They said, well, that's great. Just make sure you can find a job. <laughs> so but before I left, um, I'm at the, the last pizza party, I think, of the fall. I'm about ready to graduate. And I'm sitting there, and the rain's coming down. There's this girl over there talking to a good friend of mine. I've never seen anybody like this before. So my plans get a little delayed. Yeah. Uh, I meet Holly in um, 1996, I think it is, something like that. And, uh, um, yeah, like she's got to be a Christian. So uh, we met, got married within a year. Yeah. So she stayed there, did some schooling. I did some schooling. And then we moved to um, Iowa City, did some ministry there. And then finally, in, in 2000, we moved to Southern Evangelical Seminary and studied down there. Yeah, awesome. yeah. We're speaking tonight with Dr. Jason Reed, a uh, former Evangelical Seminary professor. So you're, you're heading to the seminary. Uh, Dr. Geisler, you know, I, I was just talking to Dr. Francis Beckwith the other day. Oh, yeah, he was, he was there, actually. Yeah, right. So it, well, he comes in the story, yeah, because he turns Catholic <laughs> while I'm there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, then yeah, there's a lot. On. Yeah, the, yeah, get, get ready, because now, sure. now everything starts to change fast. Sure. So I go down there, and I work with Dr. Geisler in the house. Love it down there. Great community. And Dr. Geyser said, you need to go get a, a degree, a, a graduate degree. I'm like, I don't want to do more school. And I didn't have the greatest undergraduate since um, they asked me to leave for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, you know what? I'll put this in God's hands. I'm going to put this in God's hands. So right. I took the, the GRE, put out applications. And the one place I wanted to go more than any place was St. Louis University. Because hmm. I was... I've always been fascinated with God. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm in philosophy is because I want to know if there is a God, and I really want to know um, if He exists and what's He like. Right. Because nothing else really matters yeah. if I can't know those things. Yeah, it's not really a theological question. No, it was very personal. That's a philosophical question to establish on which the theological question sort of hinges. Yeah, I want to know if there is a God yeah. and what's He like. Mm -hmm. And I keep running across this philosopher named Eleanor Stump. Yeah. Absolute simplicity, eternity, and defending the classical conception of God. Mm -hmm. 
And so I got into a couple of schools and I called one school who was um, maybe a little bit higher rank. So it's like if the wise decision would be go there. But the person I wanted to work with um, only teaches there maybe every other semester mm. or every other year, sorry, every other year. And I called St. Louis and Father Vitali said, no, Dr. Stump teaches every semester. Wow. Like, wow, done. Yeah. I did not know it was Jesuit. <laughs> I didn't know what Jesuits were. I didn't know he was Father Vitali. Uh -huh. All these sorts of things. So when Father Vitali called me to um, invite me to the school, he said, I see in your transcript you partied for a while, but you got it turned around. We'd like you to come. <laughs> it's great. We had two kids at the time. So we move up with these two little rugrats up to mm -hmm. St. Louis. And I walk on campus and I see all these priests walking around. Mm -hmm. Who are these priests? I'm like, is this a Catholic school? I had no idea. That just tells you how, what I knew right. about Catholicism. And so... Um, well, I guess I'll stay, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't too bad. I wasn't too anti-Catholic at the time. Yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned that you'd had that one experience of your friend earlier. And yeah, you that's about it. Of, that's really, that was your that's about it. No, that's a good question because the only other Catholics I ran into was at the, was at the um, ministry we're a part of at Iowa State, and they were former Catholics. Right. A lot of them were former Catholics. So what I knew about Catholicism was it was a works-based faith. They mm -hmm. didn't read their Bibles. And when actually when I was at... Um, um, the seminary, um, I would help people out of Catholicism. Right. Yeah. So we'll see my wife, my wife was a, is a cradle Catholic. Yeah. That's going to come back too. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about before we went any further is just, sure. you know, your, what was your sense of church history? Because it, it seems like from some of the things that you experienced and you said None. that you didn't really have a sense. None. Yeah. Okay. None. Zero. It yeah. was all ideas. Right. It's all philosophy. Systematic theology. That's yeah. all it was. Because even the idea, yeah, that, that it would be weird that Christians and philosophy even mixed. Like if you have a sense of history, like that wouldn't that, that wouldn't be weird at all. Right. But we really often are so cut off from a sense of the history of our church, of our faith. Well, even the seminary, we had a uh, historical uh, theology class, but there's no church history class at yeah. the school. But I remember um, talking about the, the the classic, the historical Christian faith. We talked a lot, a lot about that at the school. Yeah. So the word historical went, you know, across my lips, but yeah. no, no deep study of it. So go to St. Louis University, and for the first time in my life, I'm meeting, and for me, mm -hmm. God-fearing Catholics. Right. People like Michael Rhoda, Tim Paul, you know, just wonderful, uh, Brian Cross mm -hmm. next to me. He was going through same sort of, you know, same time, thinking about these things. And when I talked to Mike, Mike would quote the Bible at me. Like these, I mean, maybe these Catholics are Christians. And Father Vitali was so patient. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't the greatest student, <laughs> um, always thinking, not writing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit easier. I yeah, mean. it's like that's <laughs> what, like, people, I wasn't the greatest student because I, I could never. I just I kept thinking about a topic. I just didn't yeah. want to write about it. I kept thinking about it, but always patient with me. And I started getting attracted to the church. Mm -hmm. I didn't really realize it at that time. Mm -hmm. But this time, um, we're going to a church um, in the northern suburbs. And as far as Catholicism, um, I liked a lot of it. I loved Thomas Aquinas. I liked my Catholic classmates. But it was getting too attractive to me. And I this is strange coming um, from an evangelical background. But I almost feel like I'm losing my faith. Mm. So when I convert later, that, that's something that will sure. haunt me. Yeah. So because I, for me at this time, I will answer this, uh, yeah. say this. The Catholic Church was not the faith for me at this time. Yeah. So maybe they're Christians in some sort of quasi sense, but they're not full blown. Yeah, you'd be, you were more open to it. You were more fair to it, perhaps. You know. Then, then I would like to be, which is interesting. Yeah. Where I like to be, and I really like Thomas. Mm -hmm. Really like Thomas. So at this point, I was told I could believe St. Thomas's philosophy, but not the theology. And so I just read the Prima Pars, just the first part. Didn't get a whole lot into the yeah. the other stuff. And what you mentioned, you guys were going to church at this point. And this is it Methodist? Is it just sort of non? Uh, I was uh, first Christian Church of Florissant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Still, probably not. I was too busy in grad school. I didn't really I mean. Okay. I, I, I know they had some seminaries around, but I didn't really know. I was just right. trying to survive. Okay. Just, <laughs> so, but it just sort of for you, this, this is just normal Christianity. Normal Christianity. Catholics are still the weird ones. Yeah, but yeah. they did have communion every week. Huh. That I forgot about that. They did have, of course, it was grape juice and a crack, but every week we had communion. Right. So it's still yeah. a little bit of a sense of liturgy. A little bit, yeah. The sacraments. Yeah. Okay. So after three years there, Dr. Geyser calls me and wants to come down and teach nice. to do a module. I'm like, absolutely. So after the module I teach, he says, would you like to come down and be a professor? Hmm. So that's where the former, that's, that's, the, that's the job I wanted. That's yeah. what I wanted to do. So we just had girl number three, little mare, uh -huh. and we moved to Charlotte. And I thought this is going to be it. 
Mm -hmm. Right, we're going to come down here. I'm going to teach Thomas. We're going to raise our family here. It's quite a ways away from Iowa and Charlotte, but we'll be okay. Yeah. So, in Charlotte, teaching a lot of theology, a lot of philosophy, and then um, what happened? Then I'm teaching. This might be my second or third year. Beginning of classes, one semester, um, Dr. Geyser resigned, retired. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure all the details, but they needed someone to teach systematic theology. We'll give it to Reed. <laughs> we'll give it to we'll give it to Reed. So I was teaching systematic theology. So now I'm looking for a textbook to teach evangelical theology. Yeah. Not finding a whole lot that I liked. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't see any systematics. Norm's book hadn't been out yet, or maybe it had been out, but I wanted to, didn't want to just regurgitate his stuff. So I'll use the Summa. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching systematic theology at an evangelical school using the Summa Theology, not thinking anything of it. Yeah. So during that first semester, I'm teaching a class on Christology. And the dean is in the back doing his reviews. And so we're going over the humanity of Jesus. So I put on the board an argument, right? Yeah. And the argument was that, well, if that Mary is the mother of God, yeah. he's fully human. He, he, she's not just carrying him. It, Jesus is her boy. Yeah. So the dean puts his hand up in the back. And he says, are you saying that, she's, he's the mother, that Mary's the mother of God? And to me, this was just Christianity. Yeah. Right. This is just a simple syllogism. Yeah, a simple <laughs> syllogism. And he said, I guess the Catholics are right. I didn't know what he meant. I didn't know what he meant. Yeah. Yeah. So like, what, what why is this controversial? Yeah. So I didn't think about that. And I kept saying some Catholic things in, in, in class. We had a class on virtue ethics and we're talking about the integration of virtue and faith and sorts of things. And so I kept referring to all these Catholic authors all the time in classes. And that, you know, so um and I think if, if the uh, we didn't have a problem at church, I think I'd still be there today. Yeah. But really, it wasn't like I was looking for the church. I wasn't looking for Catholicism. What got blew up the whole thing was when the church we were a part of split. Mm -hmm. And so I look back now, and every church I'd ever gone to was kind of predetermined for me. Yeah. So the church I went to as a kid, the one I grew up in, when you're part of crusade, they're, just, they're associated with this church. We went to the, the, the salt company, they're associated with the church. Went to seminary, they're associated with the church. Um, went to um, graduate school, the church right next door. So for the first time in my life, um, where do I go? Right. Where churches do I go to? And I had to come, this was a very dark time for me yeah. because I had to come to grips with something I've been ignoring for years. And that is, I don't like going to church. Mm. I feel like, um, I feel like a, in a sense of fraud because why am I here? Um, I'm here for an hour and a half. I'm not, my life isn't changing. Yeah. Do I really believe these things? Mm. So that was hard for me. I, I mean, so if it were up to me, I wouldn't go. Yeah. And so um, we started going around different churches. And <laughs> John Mark, the, the, the next two, maybe three, but for sure the next two churches, we show up <laughs> to the service and the church is splitting that day. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> the very I'm like what just happened? We just left left one. Mm -hmm. So at this time, there's a whole stuff going on with my wife. She is. Um, I didn't know any of this at the time. This mm -hmm. is how God. So God's working on her, yeah. and she thinks she wants to get back to liturgical. So she's teaching the kids the Nicene Creed. She's teaching the kids. Um, you know, we're doing more liturgical um, church calendar. I don't know any of these things. I'm busy teaching doing <laughs> things. So have a crisis of faith. I don't want to church anymore. Yeah. So she said, "You need to talk to to Pete." So Pete was my, um, um, the, the director of the, of the salt company. He was a very, very sharp guy. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I'm going to invite him to the seminary. He's an Anglican priest at the time. I said, I want you to come to the school and talk about um, what does it mean to be an intellectual mm -hmm. and to be a pastor? Because we had a lot of students studying philosophy for the pastor. So Pete came down. Yeah. And he's wearing his collar, and everyone's freaking out. I said, I'm not, no, I'm not Catholic. I'm Anglican. And um, when he was, is that visit, I just share with him, I, I don't want to go to church anymore, Pete. I know you've you've gone through similar things. I don't know what to do. I'm burned out. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting anything out of it. Help me out. He said, you need liturgy. That's what he uh, said to me. I'm like, uh, I, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> I said, do you mean the reading out of the book at the Anglican church I went to? Hmm. He said, you need to get some liturgy. Huh. He said, he, said, he went through a crisis. He didn't want to go to church anymore. as a blind, but liturgy. Not an answer you were expecting. Not an answer I was expecting. <laughs> so I go home and he mentioned a church in, in Charlotte 
And I tell Holly, I said, you, you know anything about liturgy, honey? I think we need to do, do a liturgical church. And then, like that, my wife in the back of her said, I'm, I'm going to go back to the Catholic Church. Oh, wow. Yeah. Didn't tell me, you know, because mm -hmm. at that time, you know, I'm, I'm an evangelical church, uh, mm -hmm. school. I do not want to cause problems for people. I don't want to, you know, mess with other people's faith. And mm -hmm. I don't want them to say, have my problems be their problems. Yeah. So uh, we went to this Anglican church, mm. and I loved it. But it was interesting because they tried to marry lit liturgy with an evangelical right. format. So it was like two hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was a kind of a long time. And it was a like 45-minute drive up there. So like, like an all-morning afternoon event. Kept going up there. And I was really being Anglican. I don't, you probably like this too because you're a philosophy student. When you have a topic, you get all the books on the topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So I want to be Anglican. So I went out and got all the books. Yeah. Right? Principles of theology, whatever. Had the books. I was meeting with the pastor. Say, I'm ready. To, I want to be a Catholic. I want to, I mean, sorry, Anglican. I want to mm -hmm. be an Anglican. Here's the books. So I'm ready to talk to him. And he looked across from me and said, Oh, you're more Anglican than I am. I said, No, no. I mean, I want to study these things. I want to go through the process. I want to become Anglican. And he said, Ding, you're Anglican. <laughs> like what just happened like what this is not how it's supposed to work yeah really really disappointing we, we better take a break but it's okay. interesting you know like we so here at the coming home network right we often encounter that where people read them, their way in and they encounter a church which is a bit messier on the ground right uh, but that's even more so in that case right where um, Anglicanism uh, I mean uh, very unfortunately like Many times on the ground, what people are encountering when they're when they're yearning for liturgy, they're yearning for what they're reading about. It's fallen. I mean, depending on where you go, there's some. It's fallen far, right? There's some real difficulties. There's there's some real decline, as mm -hmm. with many of the mainline denominations, and yeah. so it can be a real shock, right? Yeah, uh, wasn't quite what you were looking for. No. Yeah. Well, let's we'll talk more about that. Um, we're talking tonight with Dr. Jason Reed. He's a former evangelical seminary professor, and we're going to come back here in a couple minutes for the rest of his story. I want to remind you that if you yourself are thinking about becoming Catholic, if you're somewhere in one of these stories and you are in a story, uh, we'd love to walk along that journey with you. So check out chnetwork.org. I've got great resources there, many stories like Jason's, but we'll hear the rest of his story here in a couple minutes. Welcome back to the Journey Home program, the second half of this program tonight. We're talking to Dr. Jason Reed. We're going to hear the rest of his story. He was a former evangelical seminary professor. And when we left off, you're teaching Thomas, and you just talked to your wife about feeling this pull back towards liturgy. And so you get right. your stack of books on Anglicanism, and you show up. Ready to and talk. And it's, it's not quite what you would expect. Ding. Like, Ding, you're Anglican. Ding, you're Anglican. Huh. What a letdown. Yeah. Now, what was going on personally, we were, we were pregnant with our fourth child, mm. and we lost that child. Oh. Yeah. That was really rough. Yeah. It's the second one we had lost. Mm. Um, so I always tell people we have six kids, two in heaven, four yeah, with us. that's right. Really rough. And th th that hit both Holly and I, that we are too far away from home. Mm. The kids were young. <laughs> I can't remember this time how old they were. Lisa, Genevieve, and Mary, they were really young at the time. And, and she's, I, I, I need to go home. They're never going to know their family. So it, yeah. we, we left St. Uh, we left Seventh Evangelical not because of any wanting to become Catholic, not for me or anything like that, or um, because I was pulled away. It's just sad. Yeah. So all this stuff happened at, the same, uh, happened at the same time. Sad about my faith. I don't want to go to church anymore. Mm. I, I put my heart and soul, hope this liturgy thing will work. Ding. I'm like, what just happened? I'm Anglican. Um, so we're going to go back to Iowa. I don't know what that meant, but it was the right thing to do. And that was really hard to, to leave that job. But my kids need to know their families. Yeah. And I want to go home and uh, to raise them so they can know their families. And I just I remember just sitting there one time, Lisa was in soccer, and I thought, my mom's never going to see her play soccer. That's, I can't have that. Yeah. So um, we knew we were leaving for Iowa. And so after the... We came with this Anglican church, and it got to the point where it was driving too far. My wife came to me. She said, um, i like to go to the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the church we were a part of had split, and I just didn't, didn't want to go to because they were spread out, and I was trying to avoid that because of all that pain of the, of the breakup. So I knew that if I went to the Catholic church, um, none of my friends would be there. Right. So 
Um, but I said, honey, if you want to go, at, th at this point, you know, I've been studying enough. Tom if Thomas Aquinas is, can go to that church, then I can't object. Mm -hmm. But I thought, there's no way I'm, gonna be, I'm not being Catholic. Yeah. I'm not being Catholic. And as a matter of fact, I'm not being Catholic so much. Um, your mentor, at, uh, or Francis, quasi mentor at, 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 at Franz uh, Steuben, but was my grader yeah. at uh, SES. And I remember being in my office, and I'm working on something. And I knew Dom had been, for, at this point, as far as I remember, for Brandon, it was like, like an intellectual thing. Sure. So he was part of a group of guys, they're really sharp guys. Some of my, I just love these guys to death. And they were thinking about things, and they're always, Brandon's always like, but. He's always, he's always <laughs> no matter what I say, he's like, you need to think about this too. That's what yeah. he's like, yeah, because he's doing the same thing. Yeah. So I walk out of there, and I said, now you're trying to tell me that Catholics really believe you should eat his, eat his body and drink his blood? In total Brandon Dom style, he puts down the papers, opens up his Bible, read John 6, closes it, and goes back to grading. <laughs> and so I said, if you become Catholic, I'm not talking to you ever again. And he'll go <laughs> back in my office and, and slam the door. So this is happening at this, at this time. I'm not interested in being Catholic. Um, my wife's going to return to the church, so I don't go to church for a while. Mm -hmm. And how do I say this? It, so this, it sounds okay. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't like that I liked it, but I felt relief. Yeah. Because at this point, I knew I wasn't very evangelical at the point, whatever that happens to mean. Right. I, I, I just have a lot of questions about evangelicalism, but I'm not close to being Catholic at this point. Mm -hmm. So, um, but my in-laws came, who I adore, the late uh, Jim and Carol, and they came and they went to church. Well, I was going to honor my you know, family. I went to, went to Mass with them. And this might sound bad, but when I went to Mass, um, I walked in the doors. I was completely ignored, uh. and it was wonderful. Because <laughs> I'm so used to every church we've gone to, they're out there meeting you. And then there's nothing wrong with greeters. So if you're a greeter right. out there, I'm not you know, throwing yeah. greeters, yeah. you know, saying anything disparaging about greeters, but it was different. Yeah. And they're all just, it wasn't just that I was being ignored. Everyone was just walking in, yeah. like intentionally. They're going in. And I, they're like, what are they doing? Like, they're, they're, they're just walking in. Yeah. And she said, well, well, the Lord's in there. Like, what are you talking about? So I walked in, and they, they, they're kneeling. I'm like, I don't know what they're doing. That's just really confusing me. They're, they're genuflecting. I didn't understand that. And then I, I didn't like the missile. I didn't know what was going on. But, it did, but in, a, in a strange way, that attracted me. Like, this is, if you're going to do this, yeah. this, to, this shows me if, if this matters to you, you put the time in yeah. and, and figure it out. And I, I, I actually figured out the missile finally, how, yeah. the, how that works, <laughs> how the missile works. But this just shocked me. And, and to see, and I never, and I seen the reverence and said, my kids, I'm like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is different. Um, yeah. It's, it's they're here. Yeah. It's quiet, and they're all praying. So I had thank thank God, this is a very good, you know, reverent body of people. Yeah. So I said, okay, um, our remaining time here, I'm willing to go to church with you because it's important to be a family. I'm mm -hmm. not going to let my hang guys. I, I apologize to the girls about not going to church. I, if, I hope I did. <laughs> if I did, they'll correct me when I get home. I'm sure. So we went to Catholic church the remaining time there at. Um, in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So then we moved back to Iowa, and and I don't remember how I got a hold of his name, but Father Neenhaus at St. Mm -hmm. Patrick's. You want to talk about a godsend. I love that man. He is such a patient guy. What a great priest. Very dry, totally German. And so I called him. I said, I, is this church Catholic? I want the stained glass. I want the... He said, it's one of the beautiful churches in town. Because I told Holly, this is going to sound terrible, but I wanted the least evangelical church to go to. I didn't, I didn't want a community center. I wanted the church, St. Patrick's. So I went there. And Neenhaus was patient with me, answered my questions. And I was still adjuncting at the seminary. Because I was I mean, I was attending with my family. The girls had just gotten um, baptized before we left. And for Holly, what really mattered to her was when she talked to, either she talked to or read something about Peter Crave, because she had some hang-ups. She's a former Catholic yeah. or cradle-Catholic prayers to the saints. Mm -hmm. And so it was either he told her or she read it when Creep said, we ask our friends to pray for us, and he's a God of the living, not the dead. And that was it. She said, got my prayers answered. So yeah. she came, started going to church. So I'm going to church um, to be together. So we moved back to Iowa. We're going to church there, still adjuncting, not mm -hmm. thinking about Catholicism, but I'm studying it, and I'm going, and I'm being attracted to it. But I don't realize how much I was being attracted to it. So I didn't think it was any big deal. Yeah. I figured that I could go to church, um, not become Catholic, and be okay. So I'm down teaching a class. 
and th this just hit me out of nowhere. So there's a friend of mine that was staying with, and she's asking about, she just got, they got back from Rome. What's this whole worshiping Mary thing? I've been studying, you know, um, devotion to Mary. So I said, no, it's not worship Mary. They're devoted to Mary. I started explaining it to her how Luther had a, a devotion to Mary. Yeah. And as I'm explaining it to her, I find myself wanting to do it. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to hell. I'm like I'm losing my soul. Mm. I'm being attracted to do it. I mean, I and I call Holly in a panic. Mm. I said, honey, I I think I I, I want to go to do a rose or something. And this is not good. This is not good. I mean, I don't like this. Um what do you should keep your mouth shut and just come home. So I came home and I said, I got I did not see that coming. And just quietly, mm -hmm. and this is actually true. Uh, the, the classes, there were some uh, colleges I was teaching up at Iowa were starting to, their schedule starting to clash with the schedule of the SES. Mm -hmm. So just objectively, I couldn't teach down there anymore yeah. because the schedule changed. So I used that as a way of just, okay, I can't do that anymore. Um, let me start thinking about these things. And so I kept praying, but I kept getting hung up, very hung up on Mary and the Pope. And I'd study, and I'd read, and I'd study, and I'd read, but just emotionally, I couldn't get there. Really hung up on it. So um, Father Neenhaus being very patient with me, keeps talking to me. I'm like, man, I, I don't know what to do here. So I keep praying about it, thinking about it, and I talked to Father Vitali. And Father Vitali just, he said, um, if you do become Catholic, he said, you don't have to figure everything out. And it's going to be messy, because mm -hmm. it's a family. Yeah. Yeah. It's a family. And that just really hit home. So when I went back to Mass the next time with the, with the kids, and there was these kids in the front pew, and they're playing with their cars, being real loud. And the parents are hold, just trying to keep it together, right, trying to pay attention. And Father Neenhouse isn't even paying attention to it. He's just giving his homily, going through the, the summer, and I'm sitting here annoyed. And I'm like, why are they doing this, you know? And either my wife said it to me that time or at some other time, she said, well, they're here. They're in church. You know what their, their week is like? Yeah. This is the Catholic Church. Wherever the church I went to, they would ask the kids to leave. Mm -hmm. And then my father-in-law said, hey, the kids can talk all they want. They're the, they're the only innocent voices in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so they're the ones that get to, and to this day, when I'm sitting there in, in mass, I hear little kids talk in the back. I'm like, yeah, you can talk all you want. You're, the, you're, yeah. you're innocent. So it's that earthiness. I started seeing the Catholicity mm -hmm. of it. So that was a real stepping stone, seeing that. And then I went up to Loom Booksellers. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all these little, huh, moments. That's a yep. good way of describing the journey. Huh, huh, another huh moment up at Loom Booksellers. Great book up in Stillwater, Minnesota. It's not there anymore, but it used to be in a church. A quarter of a million volumes. Wow. Yeah, Catholic church. It had uh, Catholic um, theology, but it's basically run by Catholics. Yeah. And I had my Iowa Hawkeye shirt on. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the Thomas Aquinas section, of course. Mm -hmm. And... This guy walks by, he said, Hawkeye, yeah. I, he said, well, I went to Ames, or got to talking. He said, well, I have a good friend of mine who's, who's a, an Anglican priest. And he said, what kind of Anglican is it? You know, which kind of Anglican? And I sat there. I'm like, what kind? And so I went through several, and he said, nope, nope, nope. And I, and I, I finally got the right one. Oh, he said, oh, that kind of Anglican, and walked away from me. And in that moment, I'm sitting there, just kind of stunned a little bit because I wasn't expecting that. And all yeah. of a sudden, the unity, because here I am in this bookstore, there's a quarter of a million books. You've got mm -hmm. all the church fathers. You've got Augustine. You've got Thomas. You've got the, everybody. And, and just, I could sense the oneness. Yeah. They're one. For all the different theological debates, for all the discussions they have, for all the different minutiae that the Catholic theologians, philosophers, all the logic chopping they do, they can say the creed. Yeah. They're one. And uh, the Anglicans can't do that. Maybe there's something to this. It's yeah. th th that oneness. I could feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I also saw that at a philosophy conference. I've seen all these heavyweights, mm -hmm. right? Eleanor Stump is there. Fali Vitali is there. Um, who was uh, Alex, Alexander Proust was there. Um, Josh Hochschild was there. These, and to me, you know, real intellectuals, giants, and watch them to go up and bow to the Lord and receive Him, and all, and, and singing and worshiping. I'm like, this is just, this is different, and I don't like it. 
because again, the, the Mary thing was really a hang up for me. I really feel like I'm losing my faith. Like I'm joining, I feel like I'm joining a cult. And I knew it was just emotion. So I'm talking to Father Tolly about this. He said, just keep praying about it, keep praying about it. But he said, you may not get an answer. You may not get an answer to your question. Maybe you just need to come in. Yeah. And so thank God for Thomas Aquinas. So I, I'm going to go back to the sacred doc, the, the, the Dr. Communis, right? Mm -hmm. Common doctor. And I was reading the issue on faith. And there's a question. I can't remember what question is, what article. But it's about whether or not the heretic and the person of faith or f both have faith when they believe the same thing. Hmm. So when, um, so let's say the heretic believes in the Trinity, so that the heretic has the right orthodox belief, mm -hmm. is he have faith on that point? Yeah. And Thomas says no, huh. because he's not. So materially, they're the same. I Means the same belief. Because he's as, a, as he's separated himself from the body. Yes, formally he's not believing it because of God's authority. Hmm. Like, holy cow. And all of a sudden, John 6 is going through me. And, and here's, the thing, here's the thing about John 6 that um, I would like people to know is that it's one of the few times that you actually, your question that you would ask Jesus, you get a straight answer. Yeah. So in that discourse, he's talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. He's giving his flesh for the world and all these things. You need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And I'm reading this just after reading Thomas. And then they ask, how can this, the Jews said, how can this man say this? Which is my question. Yeah. Right? And he quadruples down. And I thought, that's what this is what Thomas is talking about. Mm -hmm. This isn't either I'm going to believe him or I'm not. And then later he said, there are those who leave because this is difficult teaching. I found myself right there. Yeah. And when he asked Peter, are you going to leave me too? Peter didn't say, oh, I got this figured out. I mean, for all we know, we're supposed to eat your thumb. I mean, I don't know. But if you say it, you know, for only you have the words of eternal life. And I thought, I have to, I'm going to have to believe. Hmm. I'm going to have to have faith here. And I knew enough at the time. There's good reasons. So I wasn't sacrificing my head. There's good reasons to believe that Mary is immaculately conceived. Right. There's really good reasons to believe that she, she was sinless. There's good reasons for those things. Very good reasons to believe in the papacy, but it wasn't sufficient for me, for my heart to go in. Yeah. And I remember praying and praying about it, and I, I got the sense from God, like, you're going to have to come in just like this. I'm not going to answer these things for you. It's not going to be from your head. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm done with that. You're going to have to come in by yeah. faith, like Thomas said. Mm -hmm. And so I called Father Dean House, and I said, I'm ready to join the church. He said, okay. And I didn't want to be any big, you know, fanfare, so God bless him. He was on a... Uh, Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning, I can't remember what it was, um, in our chapel. My, my mom and dad came. Um, they're not Catholic, but they still came. God bless them. My kids were there, and uh, my in-laws were there. And I remember, and my wife came up, she was a sponsor, and when I was joining, I was shaking. Yeah. I mean, I, at least existentially, I felt like I was leaving the faith. I mm -hmm. felt like I was in trouble, mm -hmm. literally fear and trembling. Like, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then once I received, I have never felt that way since. Wow. Yeah. It was gone in an instant. Hmm. And so afterwards, um, I felt great. I'm like, wow, I'm not worried about those things anymore. Hmm. Thank you, God, for all that grace. Yeah. And then um, we went to a pizza place bar to get pizza and beer. And my dad said, we're going to get beer and pizza. I said, I'm Catholic. I got to be with my people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dad enjoyed that. Um, yeah, so that's how I became Catholic. Um, yeah, and then to, that, to this day, um, since then, I have loved the, the earthiness. Mm -hmm. I love when the kids talk. Um, I have never for one second... Um, regretted it, mm -hmm. um, lost s not all my friends, but um, they think that um, what happened to him, I yeah. I'm still the same guy I was before. But confronting these things, um, finding out what real Christianity, the fullness of it, seeing that um, what Thomas Aquinas taught and uh, the Eucharist, and that's a common story, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 It's a great story. I wanted to circle back on a couple of things. Sure. You know, so one of the things that strikes me, again, about the story 
there's obviously a part of this where you, you're working through the intellectual stuff, but there's many points in your story where you have these huh moments, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's more, uh, it's more a, a sense of, does this faith fit the kind of being that I am, right? So when you right, have this yearning good. for liturgy, like does this, you can't necessarily figure out, but you can put it on and say, but this seems to fit the human being, my human nature in a way that what I did, had before it didn't have. Right, right. Yeah, so there's definitely something called Catholic culture. Yeah. Yeah, so to be an evangelical, um, the, 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 the background, this was totally foreign to me. Mm. You're right. So it's like it's, like it's getting converted, mm -hmm. the whole part of you, because when I was, um, went to a couple of um, you know, different Protestant churches growing up, and it was very, um, it's an auditorium type thing, and, mm -hmm. and um, they welcome to the meeting, um, but the body isn't there, mm -hmm. the blood isn't there. Um, but <laughs> there was one time, okay, so I was, I, I, we went to a, a church in, in Charlotte, mm -hmm. forgot about this, um, just before we leave. They said, hey, we've been reading in this liturgical book, and we're going to have every month a Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. And so, and the, what, how they did it was they tear off the, the bread pieces of it and they hand it to you and they had a cup, you know. And I think you're supposed to dip it hmm. and then eat it. But my wife went right for the chalice because that's where she grew up and they're looking right. at her. She said, oh, I'm supposed to dip it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> um, but they said they, they picked it up. This is the second time I went there and they've taken, I've been reading St. Thomas and uh, Peter Crave. To pick, they tore apart the body of Christ. Embarrassing, I said, uh, no, it's not. I went back and sat down. Yeah, not a good move, but yeah. not, not a good move. But I don't know where that came from. Like, why would I say right. that? Like, I said, I said, like, why would I say that? Yeah. So I kind of sat down kind of because I was embarrassed. Um, but then I went to the Catholic Church. It just, it just fit. I mean, this, this yeah. something, it fits when you've got the, the vestments and you've got the, the reverence and you've got the, the table and you have the prayer. I could not believe all the, the scripture. So someone who's raised, so when you're evangelical, mm -hmm. And I, uh, to this day, I am so thankful for my upbringing, mm -hmm. um, especially people like Jeff Dodge of the World and, mm -hmm. the, and the Peter Matthews, because they Absolutely. emphasized they they emphasized scripture. Yeah. So we had tests on scripture mm -hmm. in our in our group. I remember going over and and uh, Harold questioning me on the scripture. We had scripture tests, um, prayer. We had Monday morning prayer every morning, whether you liked it or not. Get up early and go to the union in prayer mm -hmm. and pray. Um, evangelization, right, sharing your faith, right, and then the high standards of morality. So those things I took with me. And then when I went to um, seminary, mm -hmm. they throw in faithfulness to the truth mm -hmm. and church history. So what, ironically, um, becoming Catholic, I just think I'm just a good evangelical, to be honest with you. So why I, I, the, yeah, the all prayers, what you have, yeah, yeah. It just I didn't feel like I gave up anything. Yeah. And I think that's what's maybe uh, something I would, I, I try to get across is that no, I, I didn't give up anything. No, what mm -hmm. happened is, is because I started listening to these things. I mean, they, they trained me to believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, in evangelicalism, they have debates in um, eschatology, mm -hmm. right? Whether there's you know rapture, millennialism, all these debates that unfortunately divide um, yeah. those um, um, groups. But taking the scripture literally taking the scripture of what it says. And when I would get to John 6, they, they were actually, they were training me to believe when he says, look, this is my mm -hmm. body. It's not a metaphorical is. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like reading, I didn't become Catholic because um, I read a whole bunch of Catholic books. Right. The scripture has what I call Catholic verses. I mean, he's mm -hmm. breathing on them the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so, again, being evangelical, the reason why I think I'm just still evangelical, because when God says something, I found this in the Catholic Church, when God says something, mm -hmm. the Catholic Church says, okay. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a point I wanted to bring out, too, that your sense of, of liturgy, again, the sense that when you went in, nobody talked to you. Now, sometimes that happens because we're not doing our job hospitality-wise. Right, yeah, yeah. So but, this was just, for, but, for me, that was, that was significant. But primarily, it's not a hospitality thing. It's not a social event. It's an event where... It's not so much that we're going to seek God, but God is there to encounter us. And it's, it's interesting because oftentimes uh, Catholicism is accused of, you know, works righteousness or there's too it's much not. religious stuff. But really, if we think, if, if one way to, de to negatively define religion is man's search for God, like us mm -hmm. doing a bunch of stuff, Catholicism in so many ways is we're stepping back and letting God do it. 
The sacraments are God meeting us. The mm-hmm. liturgy is, is us getting out of the way and, and encountering that, you know, entering into something that we didn't make, that we didn't originate, that didn't start with us. And so you had that little bit of that sense entering in there that, oh, it's, now it's no longer like I have to kind of fill in the blank here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, can, can, if I can give a, a plug for Please. confession. Yeah. Oh, so I just went to a confession before I came here, so I give a good interview. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have, you know, any, you know, <laughs> so hopefully it took. Yeah. We'll see, right? 24 hours, maybe. <laughs> well, it did. You know it did, because that's one of the, the things that, about that's sacraments. True. That's you true. You have cer- the certainty. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm in there um, <laughs> and uh, confessing, and like, you know, like any father, you struggle with certain things, and... Um, the priest said something like, and this is just why I love being Catholic. He said, God is happy. I'm so glad you're here. You're not fooling him. Like, true. I remember you know, before you go in, like, how do, do, do I have to admit this? Like, he already knows. I just go in. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to agree. And he said, without the grace of God, mm-hmm. you cannot love your wife. You cannot love your family. You can, I'm like, that's right. I, I'm not on my own. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the darkness came from. Mm-hmm. In the past. I always felt like I was doing this on my own. Right. Right. So to your point, no, I, I I didn't, yes, this fits well. I love it. This sounds like Christianity. Yeah. Um, I'm not, uh, the sacraments, um, <laughs> you're not on your loan. And when he said, and I absolve you, I'm like, because for years, how do you deal with the guilt? Because right. even when I would confess mm-hmm. sins, and I remember reading 1 John in, in the Our Father, why in the world am I confessing my sins? Right. I, I go around, again, these Catholic verses, Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this, this day. Why? Hmm. First John, um, he, if you sin, you know, he, he is faithful and just and forgive us your sins. I'm like, why? I thought I was forgiven. And that I mean, I think that's probably where a lot of the, the sadness came from because I knew I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was longing for. That's the reason I became, that goes all the way back to Stephen Dave Dravecki. Right. Seeing all of that. Yeah. God, what he started there, he was started there. Okay. I'm, I'm going to bring you in. But I can't, if he tried to bring me in at that point, I, w- yeah. I would have been hostile. Yeah. I think I in many hostile. people's lives, evangelicalism gives them a great start. It introduces them to Christ. I mean, we have, Absolutely. Many, we have many students who leave the Catholic faith because they never quite met Christ. And I mean, a lot of those people. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the, an evangelical introduces them to Christ, and that's good. We praise God when that happens, mm-hmm. right? But then oftentimes, right, what they're lacking, what they're yearning for is, well then, but how do I walk this, how do I live this life out? How do I, what do I do with my sins? What do mm-hmm. I do with the, the fact that I was saved and now I still am a bum? Like, like, yeah, <laughs> a bum is a nice way of saying it, yeah. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. Right. And some of the moral failings, you got to be kidding yeah, me. And my works aren't enough. Yeah, my <laughs> not even close, not even close. Yeah, and, and I, what I love about Catholic spirituality, there's one book I read. There's two spiritual truths. The first is, put zero confidence in yourself. Yeah, and put all your confidence in God. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Yeah, well, we have about two minutes left, and I have like a thousand other things that I wanted to talk to you sure, about. But, sure, sure. You know, maybe maybe next time. But uh, in the short time we have left, if you would, well, first of all. Where are you now? What are you doing now? Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so uh, I'm a professor of philosophy at Divine Word College okay. in Iowa, um, teaching Thomas Aquinas mm-hmm. in the Society of Divine Word, and uh, it's such a great place. It's a little town in Iowa. People from all over the world yeah. come. We have students from Haiti, Vietnam, um, Nigeria, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to throw the Texas people. That's right. Uh and it's just, yeah, so teaching full time there, yeah, great, yeah, awesome. and we, li- yep, all right, and so yeah, it, just a, a brief word, if you would, if someone coming from a similar background to you, you know, maybe from uh, a, a broken church, you know, as you did when you grew up, uh, but who's yearning for something, maybe yearning for liturgy, yearning for something. You know, something. What would you say to them? Maybe? I would say this: um, do not. It's what Father Dubé said. Yeah. Father Dubé is a man of, that teaches a lot of great spirituality. So yeah. he teaches that you do not judge a system by people who don't follow it. You judge it by those who do follow it. And the Catholic, if you want to be a saint, if you want to see God, if you want to have the presence of God in your life, it's there. Um, no, they can't take it from you. Nobody can take it from you. They, it, everything there is you want out of the Catholic, out of your Christian faith, the church offers and you can get it 
That's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Jason Reed. No, thank you. Joining us thank tonight, St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. <laughs> uh, pray for us. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Journey Home Program. I do pray that Dr. Jason Reed's story touched your heart. And again, if, if you're on a journey or if you have a story to tell, we'd love to hear it. So check out chnetwork.org for more stories like Jason's. Again, thanks for being with us tonight. God bless you. We'll talk to you again next week.